Hi pals and at long last it's time again to say welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov too and as probably most of you know I've been abroad for about six weeks now but I'm finally back for my Christmas holidays and I've got uh, I've got a free week break now over three weeks so I've got plenty of time to make loads of videos for you guys every day or nearly every day hopefully yeah I hope you will enjoy them of course just in time for me to come back the 8.10 test server goes live or it went live a week ago I think so I'm a bit late on this but all the same I want to bring you all the stuff that you deserve and um, today this video will be about the new Japanese tier 10 tank as you probably all know by now the Japanese tanks are there hooray also i will be doing a quick overview of, of nearly all the changes in this patch however that will be a very very short overview i won't be going into much detail because i think that you've probably all kind of found out what's coming uh, in this patch from other youtubers channels and stuff yeah this is basically what we're gonna do today if you just want to skip the overview and go straight away to the stb1 review a uh, link will be popping up on screen right now and that will take you right to the review okay so um let's get stuck in but of course if we go to the tech tree the most obvious changes that the japanese tech tree has implemented we can see we've got this whole line of medium tanks this is very interesting this is the first time that the tech tree has been added to the game with medium tanks only leading up to tier 10 and no heavy tanks. Also, we've got uh, light tanks leading up to tier four. I haven't had the chance to play any of these tanks yet, except for the STB-1, the tier 10 tank, because I've literally just come onto the test server half an hour ago. I've been able to have three games about, and then I just straight away got stuck into this review. All in all, these tanks aren't looking that good, if I'm totally honest. Up to tier seven, they look average or even below average. But starting from tier 8 with the STA1 and then the Type 61 and the STB1, they all look really, really good. So, um, yeah, that's definitely something to look forward to. Uh, I'll be talking about this tank here, the STB1, later in more, detail as I, in more detail, as I already said. Also, if we go to the Chinese tech tree, we can see that now the Type 64 has been added to the in-game shop as well as the Chino Kai here to premium tanks that have been added last patch but you could only buy them in the gift shop. Then another change is that if we go to the Russian tech tree we can see there are two new tanks here so now the Russians have got three tier 10 medium tanks the third one being the object 430 and uh, there's also this object 432 that um, leads to the object 430 from the object 416. This is the object 430 version 2, the tier 9 tank. Um, haven't played a game in this yet, it's probably going to be kind of similar to the tier 8 tank. And this here is the object 430. A lot of people are getting pretty excited about this tank because they could say this is the new best tier 10 Russian medium tank because it's got a lot more frontal armor than the other tanks got 120 millimeters but the gun is slightly worse but it's very very quick i've had one game in this tank i liked what i saw uh, but i'm i really haven't played it enough to give you a real good opinion on it yet also as you probably all know by now a new map has been added to the game i quickly show it to you um in the team training let's see team training down here um it's a japanese map called uh, hidden village here it is so here you can see the, um, a map of it from above and i've talked to my friend who has played a few games in this map and he says it's really really good and i can really see that being a very interesting map because up here you've got these kind of good opportunities to go hold down you've got good space for maneuvers for tank destroyers or medium tanks in the city you can have heavy tanks battling it out what is very interesting is that like basically only two thirds of this tank are um, not this tank of this map are available because one third is kind of blocked by this huge mountain here i think this is mountain fujiyama i think it's called this is the biggest mountain in japan i'm not quite sure please correct me if i'm wrong but we had that in geography like three years ago, so I'm not quite sure. But anyway, this map's looking really, really good. And I'm really looking forward to having some games. And I haven't had any games yet, but um, yeah, they're still to come. So let's see, what other changes have we got? They've reworked uh, the maps Karelia, El Haluf, Airfield and Steps. 
So um, the most significant changes have been made to El Haluf. They've added a big hill in the centre of the valley, basically, to reduce camping on that map, which always was a major issue with El Haluf. That gameplay should be a lot more enjoyable now on that map, hopefully. I still haven't had a chance to play a game on it. Uh, and on the other maps, they've just basically done some balancing to make it more fair from both spawn points. Also, they've added the team battle mode to several maps. So up to now, team battle was restricted to very few maps but they've added piles of maps several achievements have been removed from tank companies so that means you cannot get these achievements anymore in tank companies which i guess makes perfect sense because it would be pretty easy to kind of just cheat your way through and farm these achievements in tank companies if you for example on team speak with the people you're playing with so i think that's a really good change they've done quite a few changes to the graphics for example they've reworked the way the fog works a lot looks really good the lighting a lot better it just looks all really crisp and nice and if we go to the settings for a minute and we go to graphics we can see there are a lot more features available you can also have a color filter so we'll just quickly try that out 1940s um, cine film okay so you can see it kind of looks a bit old it's really nice I'm not gonna use it because I just like my game standard but you know if you like that kind of stuff you've got all kinds of stuff to mess around here and um, you can yeah, it's basically really good it's they've added motion blur effect i just turned that off because it really hammers your frame rate and it makes me feel sick uh, so yeah um basically they've just re reworked the entire graphics system it's really really nice also they've done some changes to all tanks based on the kv and is chassis which basically means all the russian heavy tanks really or nearly all of them and quite a few of the russian tank destroyers and um, what they have changed is they've um, improved the suspension, so the ground resistance of the suspension, I think. They've improved it quite a lot, so that's really good for me because, for example, I own an IS-4, and that means that this tank will be feel a lot more agile now, and that will apply for nearly all of these tanks. Look, the KV-1S. Um, definitely it's based on the KV-1, the KV-1 of course, the IS, the KV-3, the IS-3, the KV-4, the IS-8, the IS-7 and the IS-4, all these tanks, um, also the Object 268 uh, and um, tanks like these in the tank storyline will also benefit because they're also based on heavy tank chassis. So that's really, really good news for you Russian tank drivers and also for me obviously because I am one. Yeah, that's basically it. I've left some changes out that I didn't think was so important and as I said I just wanted to keep this really really short but um, yeah now that gets to the really important part about the STB1 it's tank that I really really like I've only had three games in it up till now but I, they have been so good I well they haven't been like really good but for like the first games I had in this tank they were pretty amazing and I definitely love this tank and um, basically for those guys of you who are wondering what this tank's like kind of in a nutshell it's basically like a leopard one but it has got armor it lacks some of the guns laser like accuracy but it's got quite good armor which is really really important giving me as a person who really loves driving as leopard one a tank that is like the leopard one only with armor and the ability to bounce quite a few shots frontally it's just it's i'm so happy i love 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 this tank it is so amazing and um i cannot wait to get my hands on it on the test server i'll just quickly go over the stats with you and i will be comparing it to the leopard one it's got 1950 hit points exactly the same as the leopard it weighs slightly less but uh, the weight is very comparable but the engine power is quite significantly less so that means that the power to weight ratio which is still really good it's just short of 20 but it is less than the leopard's 20.52 but it's not all that a significant difference this tank uh, definitely feels very 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 fast okay next we move on to the speed limit which obviously the leopard is still way ahead of the stb1 the leopard has got speed limit of 65 kilometers an hour while the stb1 only gets 53 but i mean 53 is still really really fast but it's just not as fast as the leopard but the really good power to weight ratio on this tank will allow you to 
pretty easily hit that top speed and even succeeded when going downhill. The traverse speed is a mind-boggling 52 degrees per second which is nearly as good as the Leopard which has just got a legendary track traverse. So it's not quite as good but still pretty good. And while we're at it I'm just going to quickly compare the turret traverse which is a lot better actually on the STB1, 6 degrees better than on the Leopard, so that will make quite a big difference in 42 degrees per second, that's really really good, that means that in a brawl you will pretty easily be able to um, come out on top if you use your turret reverse speed, so that's really really good. All in all we can say that the Leopard is a bit, quite a bit more manoeuvrable actually than the STB1, but I must say from playing it, it hasn't felt all that much different, certainly it didn't have the amazing speed of a leopard but still this tank is very very quick it's kind of comparable to something like the object 140 in its speed maybe a little bit better even but yeah it's definitely very good next we'll move on to the armor which is the big downside of the leopard the leopard has got 70 millimeter frontal hull armor whereas the stb1 has got 110 millimeters and the angling is a lot better on this tank than on the leopard one i just quickly let you have a look at this tank than at the leopard the angling is way better so what that means is that you should not rely on bouncing shots basically but you have got a pretty fair chance of bouncing some shots especially at an angle it's kind of comparable to the t62a's upper glaciers only it's quite a bit better and the lower glaciers is well it's a really small target at a really really steep angle so that will mean that um, hitting and penetrating that can be quite difficult probably now if we look at the turret armor frontally the left has only got 52 millimeters, which is just ridiculously bad. Whereas the STB1 gets 132, which, if you look at the number like that, doesn't really look like that much, but it's more than it says on paper. Because, first of all, there's this gun mantle. The armor on this gun mantle gets up to 230 millimeters, which is really, really strong. We're talking Russian medium tanks here. Also, this is angled really well so except for if you're firing heat at this tank you basically haven't got any chance to penetrate this gun mantle usually the 130 millimeters or, or the 132 millimeters armor zone probably is along here and that is at a very very steep angle so the turret is very 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 difficult to penetrate uh, frontally however what can probably happen or what i i haven't i'm not sure about this but i'm just guessing that maybe if a shot comes in right here beneath the gun, into the gun mantle, ricochets off the gun mantle and gets deflected into the upper glaciers, I think it would have a good chance of penetrating, but I mean, I'm not sure about this. But still, the armor frontally is looking really, really good on this tank. Obviously, you've got a few weak spots, like for example, this driver's hatch here or this cupola up here. Um, however, there's quite a lot of stuff in front of the cupola which could make hitting it kind of difficult. From the sides, the armor is the same as on the leopard, um, on the hull, and it's quite a bit better on the turret actually, but still most shots will penetrate from the side of the turret. And from the rear, the armor is absolute garbage. You could actually argue that the leopard is better armored from the rear than this tank here. So. Basically, you don't want to angle this tank really because 35 millimeters of armor can be outmatched by almost any, well, not any, but quite a few tier 10 heavy tank or tank destroyer guns. What that means is, if you don't know what outmatching is, it is basically if the um, caliber of a gun is three times as high as the armor value of a surface it's hitting, um, it will definitely penetrate no matter how steep the angle is. So if you want to angle the most you want to angle like this because just basically some not all that experienced players might just think that they will have no chance penetrating this side because they just don't know the exact figures of the arm and how bad exactly it is. But usually you just want to basically be facing the enemy's front on or at a very 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 slight angle. Also artillery will really really feast on this tank because he shells will just go right through this engine deck here or splash damage but won't be stopped at all nearly by your side armor so you'll you just 
will be wrecked by artillery you have to really watch out but if you keep moving you will make it very difficult for enemies to hit these weak spots here or for artillery to damage you and this tank's definitely got the power to weight ratio and the speed and agility to maintain quite a good speed around the battlefield and keep enemies on their toes the gun for me is probably the best thing about this tank or well Along with the armor probably, we'll have a look at this gun and compare it to the Leopard's gun. They both use um, a modification of the Royal Ordnance gun used on the British tier 10 medium tank. The rate of fire is significantly better on the STB-1, 7.5 compared to 6.67, that's nearly a whole round per minute more. That means that the DPM is way better on this tank because the alpha damage is exactly the same. You can see the DPM is 2925 on the STB-1 and only 2600 on the Leopard. That's a significant advantage. Actually, the STB-1 is the tank with the most DPM in the game at the moment. Um, not in the game, but the medium tank with the most DPM in the game. Because if we compare it to the T62A, which up to now had the highest DPM, it's only got 2,909. Whereas the Japanese tank has got 2,925, that's just absolutely massive DPM. So um, that means that you will be able to absolutely chew your enemies up, especially if we consider the fact that this tank has got 390 alpha damage, whereas the T-62A has only got 320. This is a significant advantage. However, this tank has got, I'd say, two major drawbacks to the honest con, which are the, the penetration potential and the accuracy. The penetration potential, as we can see, is a lot worse than on the Leopard. It's 10 millimeters less. That's quite a significant difference and can have quite an impact on the game. So basically, that will mean that you will want to flank with this tank around the sides and rears of your enemies. I mean, 258 is still all right. It's not like the super pushing of tier 10 or anything, but it will have a bit of an impact on your gameplay I'd say. Now interestingly enough the heat penetration is exactly the same with both tanks and the HE penetration is the same too. 53mm is pretty good that means that you'll be able to effectively use HE shells with 480 um, average damage against tanks like the Waffenträger E100. I've started taking a lot more HE shells into my games lately just because there are all these new tanks coming with paper thin armor zones and you can so easily penetrate them with HE. So that's why I would always recommend to carry at least 5 HE rounds in your magazine. The accuracy is not really comparable to the Leopard's 0.3 accuracy which is the sec joint second best accuracy in the game after the Waffenträger of E100. 0.36 is... It's not bad, but it's not very good really. This water accuracy even, for example, for T62A has. You cannot really snipe anymore with this accuracy. For me, sniping accuracy starts with 0.34, um, and 0.36 is more brawling really. You can still effectively hit enemies at long range, but generally I would avoid sniping with this tank and try to engage enemies at medium to uh, close range. The aiming time also is quite a letdown compared to the Leopard um, with 2.3 seconds instead of 1.9 seconds. 2.3 seconds still is quite good, but it's no way as good as the 1.9 seconds on the Leopard's gun. All that kind of defines the way you want to play this tank. You want to play it as a brawler. You want to try to use your good maneuverability to outmaneuver your enemies at close quarters combat. And... Um, yeah, another thing that I failed to mention until now is the amazing gun depression of this STB-1. It's got 10 degrees of gun depression. That's absolutely amazing. That is the best gun depression of any tier 10 medium tank, along with the fighting vehicle 4202, which has also got 10 degrees. It's better than the M48 pattern. And combined with this amazing turret arm on this tank, that means that you will very effectively be able to go hull down. All in all, I probably prefer the Leopard's gun over the STB-1's gun. But on this tank, the way this tank plays, and with its great armor frontally, and its pretty good maneuverability, but not outstanding maneuverability, I think this tank's... Um, 
this tank's gun suits it very well and better than, for example, the leopard's gun would fit it. So I'm very, very pleased with this gun, and I think it's fairly balanced because it trades accuracy and penetration for a uh, better firepower and a uh, basically better DPM. So yeah, I think that's definitely fair. So let's see what stats have we got left. The view range, 410 meters. That's above average view range. Um, joint third best after the Baffentrager and the M48 pattern. Now I think, you know, before patch 8.1, all tier 10 tanks had 400 meters view range except for the M48 pattern, which had 420. But now lately, all new tanks being added to the game get 410 meters view range. And I think that gives them, well, that makes it kind of a real disadvantage to have 400 meters view range where uh, before patch 8.1, 400 meters view range was absolutely normal and average and nothing to be ashamed of. But this will give you definitely a bit of an advantage and then you've got your 750 meters signal range, which is absolutely average. All in all, I think it's just a, all round a really good tank. It doesn't really excel in any area except for the DPM, really. I think this could become the new T-62A. Basically, it, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a hybrid of a Leopard 1 and the Russian medium tanks, having this amazing turret armor and decent hull armor but also this 105mm gun of the Leopard and definitely it plays very similar to the Leopard only with great armor which is amazing. I probably prefer this tank to the Leopard 1 just because it's got armor and the DPM which is absolutely amazing and I don't really enjoy sniping all that much I'm more of a close-up aggressive player however I love the Leopard I still love it um, I'm never getting rid of this tank it's absolutely amazing but the S3-1 is just a little bit better I think and I really, really like it. It just suits my style of gameplay really well. Now, the equipment layout I've gone for is the vertical stabilizer to be able to brawl very effectively with this tank and also to be able to um, keep the aiming time down because 2.3 seconds is kind of... It's just the border of becoming bad for tier 10 medium. So, yeah, that's, that's definitely a must-have on this tank. Also, um, the tank gun rammer is really important just because it will buff your reload time a lot and DPM is one of the major pros of this tank. Now for the third slot you could choose probably between the coated optics or improved vents. I personally went for vents because I love them but if you feel that you really want to maximize those 410 meters view range you can definitely go for coated optics. Um, as for crew skills, I went for repairs on all my crew because I just play this tank so aggressively and so close up that I really want to get the most out of my um, my maneuvers and don't want to be sitting around there trapped and uh, vulnerable to artillery, for example. But you could get brothers and arms, but it's not all that important on this tank, really, as you would probably not really realize the difference all that much. I would definitely go for smooth ride and snapshot because that would keep the aiming time down and also make brawling a lot more easy. Then also I would get off-road driving on your driver probably and safe storage on the loader because I personally haven't been ammo racked in this tank yet, although I think maybe once but I'm not sure. But other people have told me that the ammo rack is very very vulnerable in this tank so you definitely want to have safe storage. Uh, and then of course six cents on the commander. So um yeah, now the boring part of the garage is more or less over and we can take this tank out for a spin. So I hope you're looking forward to that and I'll see you on the battlefield in a second. So I've got two games lined up for you guys today and these were both the very first games, the first two games I played in this tank. The first one I spawned on Cliff and um, right now in a second you will see me testing out the gun depression of this tank. Uh, and I must say I was pretty impressed. Look at this. This is amazing. It's basically you dig up the ground in front of you when you drive with this tank. That's amazing. You know, you could sell it to farmers, use it as a plow. <laughs> okay, nobody laughed probably. I'm sorry. My humor. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, what I'm doing here is I'm heading up for the F6 and F5 area because there's this little hill there and I can use that to kind of go hold down and use my gun depression to snipe over uh, at the tanks progressing to F9. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. Now, 
Let's see, I've got quite a lot of backup here, and the team split up very well, so probably, yeah, this could go quite well. Um, there's an enemy STB1 over there now. One, um, one good thing about the fact that I've only arrived at home kind of late for the test server is that my and um, that there won't be that many of the new tanks and people will more like be testing out for uh, other tier tens on the battlefield which will give a lot more variety so uh, right here you can see me chewing up this t57 heavy with my dpm for example in leopard one i would have only been able to get one shot into that tank before he retreated but with this tank here i got two shots into the t57 so that's really good now there's the stb1 i fire that one pretty clutch but it goes in probably penetrating his upper glaciers and now let's see can we get the t57 now the problem because of that bush in front of me that isn't translucent i can't um, actually see the T-57, I can only see his outline, which makes it pretty difficult to hit him. I only track the STB-1, which is, I still don't think he can see me, I haven't got 6 cents in this tank yet, but there are bushes 15 centimeter, um, more than 15 meters away from me, so I probably shouldn't be able to spot me from that distance. Now this is a really good position where I am here, because I can't be shot at from the right side, and so long as the enemies don't come and rush me, which doesn't seem very likely at the moment, I should be quite safe here. Now oh, there's a Waffentrager of E100 spotted over there. Now, in retrospect, I should have taken one shot with APCR and then switched to high explosive. Because so I could have done a lot more damage to that tank, but my mind just didn't work at that second and I didn't so uh, I saw that Waffentrager E100 progressing out of cover just before he disappeared so I took the blind shot hopefully I got him and now a new Waffentrager E100 appears um, we get two shots into him or not I get two but our team gets quite a few shots in and then we put a second shot in above average damage rolls here and now I, I'm burning and the thing is I didn't um, I didn't extinguish that fire till very late because I had rebound my I, I forgot I've got this gaming mouse and I forgot to um, to um, how do you call it um, oh, I've just got a massive brain fart here uh, I forgot to customize it uh, so that I can use my uh, use my fire extinguisher with the mouse so yeah that's a shame but still I think for the very first game in this tank that I played, it was pretty good. It showcased the DPM, the rapid rate of fire, and also the hold down and gun depression abilities of this tank. But if you thought this game was good, I've still got a real goodie with a second game coming up, so stay tuned. Okay guys, I'm really sorry, but the replay that I actually wanted to show you on mines, something's wrong with the replay file and I can't open it. So, um... I'm going to show you another replay instead of that one and it's also kind of a decent game but I had it later on this day with my friends Redwood Forest and General Denny. We've all we're all on our STB ones and it's on Murawanka. Now uh it's a bit of a shame that I couldn't show you the game I originally intended to show you guys because that really showcased the amazing gun depression and hold down abilities of this tank. Uh, if I somehow get that replay to work within the next few days I'll definitely upload it for you and link it to this video if I don't forget. Um, yeah but for now this replay will have to do and uh, it was a decent game so First of all, my friends and me head out to the left side and to the encounter base because usually nearly all the tanks of the team go to the forest and camp there and basically no one's there to cap the base. But in this game it was just the other way around. All the team goes lemminging off to the base and only two tank destroyers stay to defend the forest. So I say to my friends, guys, look at the right flank, we've got to fall back and defend and that's exactly what I do. Now I love taking up this position here with tanks like the STB-1 or the T-34-3 for example that have got amazing turret armor and good hold down abilities. Um, now the fighting vehicle gets a shot into me and you can see that he ammo racked me frontally probably. If we quickly zoom out we can see where the shot penetrated. That shot there damaged my ammo rack. 
So yeah, ammo racking is obviously a problem on this tank, so you probably want to have safe storage on your loadup. Now my second shot was very unlucky, it bounced off a side of a turret of a fighting vehicle, that was a real shame. Um, yeah, and I took one shot from him. Now I think the two tank destroyers they will be easily able to deal with that fighting vehicle on their own, so I just stay here. And oh, there's a WT of E100. So, yeah, we got one shot in. Now you see me reloading HE shells because that weapon trigger's only got 20 millimeters of um, turret armor. So I can make um, do increased damage to him by firing HE. Now that I fired one HE shell at him, I reload APCR ammo because the AMX 50B is in a lot harder target to penetrate frontally, although it's French. And uh, there we go. So my friends and me basically eradicate those three tanks with the help of our teammates, which is really good news. And General Denny picked up one kill. Now let's see if we can pick up a kill on that fighting vehicle over there. No, but he's hiding behind the house. And um, the T-57 Heavy gets him from the ridge, I think. So there's a T-57 Heavy spotted over there. Now this house, is this little shed in front of the building I'm hiding behind is kind of in the way. So I have to aim through this window which makes it kind of tricky. But there we go, our first shot in an above average damage roll. Average damage for this tank is 390. Now in patch 8.6 you are able to shoot through uh, some structures. But I'm not sure if those houses, destructible houses, count. Uh, as those structures. Um, please let me know in the comments if any of you guys know. Now this Leopard Prototype 8 is a really difficult target to hit right now. Um, I'm not bothering with loading HE shells just because I could easily penetrate him even with my EPC APCR ammo and uh, one shot kill him because he's got um, 330 um, hit points. Now that's really unfortunate that bounced off his gun mantle at I think which is the only place in the whole tank where there is a little bit of armor. That was at quite a steep angle. And uh, my friend just gets the kill before I do Redwood. So General Denny's already dead. But yeah there we go. Now there's the British tier 10 medium tank also using the 105mm uh, Royal Ordnance gun. But uh, the heavy tanks over there on the corner just absolutely obliterate him. So, um, yeah, it's basically my friend and me here against probably all those nasty tank destroyers hiding out in the wood. So, yeah, this could be a pretty tricky situation. Now, I'm just thinking about heading out left and just join up with my teammates there. But for now, I'm just going to um, snipe at that pattern. Um, now, yeah, this tank hasn't actually got sniping accuracy, but those kind of shots you can really make them happen. Um, now, I, uh, my friend and me decide not to go to the to join the fighting vehicle and the T-57, but rather to stay here and defend this corner because, uh, well, I don't really know why, but we just made that decision. And the instant I disappear from behind that house to relocate up here, um, the T-57 Heavy appears. Uh, starting to shoot my friend who start, tried to retreat a little, little later than me in the ass. So I say to him, okay, um, Redwood, I'm giving you cover fire here so you can retreat. But still, he only manages to get behind this hill with uh, 100 and something HP left. So that's pretty tough. Um, now, let's see. Ah, that, I just twitched. My hand just twitched on the mouse before I pr pulled the trigger. So I missed. See, can we make the second shot happen? Yes, good. That's a thing that I really love about these APCR firing guns on the tier 10 medium tanks, is that the shell travel time is so short that leading your shots is really easy, because you nearly don't have to lead them at all, as you can see on that object 263 there. So now, I remember that, that T-57 Heavy was in very low health, so I kill him, but all those very nasty tanks have just decided to progress out of the forest. I didn't see that coming. I thought they were further back. I was just planning on quickly taking out that T-57 Heavy while it was re-clipping. Re and um, then basically um, drawn to cover behind that house again. But for Yak Panzer E-100 and the E-75 um, e appeared. And they also take out my friend. And I'm not sure how this game is going to end. I can't really change my perspective. 
Um, yeah, it's, we're probably going to lose it because they've got way more tanks than us. But still, I hope I kind of showcased the versatility of this tank anyway. And I had another game on Malinovka for you guys, but uh, I did better in that one. But you know how Malinovka plays out. It's just really boring to watch. So I decided not to show you that, but this one. And uh, I'm really sorry again that I couldn't show you the uh, game on mines, but um, just some of my uh, computer or world of tanks decided that you weren't allowed to see them. And yeah, I'm sorry for that. But anyway, for some uh, final words and a conclusion, uh, let's go back to the garage. So what do I think of the STB1? Well, I've already said it. Um, quite often. I really, really love this tank. I think this tank probably is, if not my new favourite tank in the game, then definitely it is up in the top three. I really, really like this tank. But I do not think it's overpowered, to be totally honest, because it's got drawbacks, like just appallingly thin side armour. And uh, just the fact that this gun has got... Um, Worse accuracy, aiming time and penetration than the Leopard 1's gun uh, means that it's it kind of balances this tank quite a bit and also the reduced speed limit. So yeah, all in all I think this tank is a really good addition to the game. I'm really going to enjoy this tank on the live server. First thing this line comes out, I'm going to start grinding down it straight away with 3 XP first and then uh, later playing the tank so you can be... Looking forward to some footage of those tanks coming up from the live server soon. Uh, and yeah, I can definitely recommend this tank um, to all of you guys. If you love your fast medium tanks like I do. For example, if you like driving stuff like the Leopard 1, the T62A, all that kind of stuff. This tank fits right in with those. And I think it's going to be really, really exciting to see how this tank... Uh, changes the gameplay on the live server so i cannot wait to get my hands on it and uh, i hope i can give you some good first impressions of it and um, next up i'm probably going to review the object 430 and after that we are going to talk about let's see where are they um yep yeah, the tier 8 and tier 9 um, japanese medium tanks and oops my connection has just been interrupted but never mind the video is over anyway so as i said i hope you enjoyed it i hope i could uh, give you my opinions on this tank and showcase some of its strengths and weaknesses for you um if you enjoyed this video consider giving the thumbs up below or liking my facebook page uh, or even subbing to my channel i would appreciate any of those actions any of those actions a lot and um yeah i'll see you in my next video which will probably be the upcoming 430 review uh, see you then and bye bye Bye.